What's up, people? This is the Nature Girl 30 here, and I am coming to you with a raw review for the special raw. Raw gets rocked. I can go into how much raw didn't get rocked, but I'm just gonna go into the beginning. The opening sequence was really stupid. The fact that they started off with Michael Cole and his stupid challenge was. Come on, man. Haven't we suffered enough for WrestleMania? <sighs> But then CM Punk came out, and honestly, CM Punk was just pretty much saying everything we already know, how stupid and completely inane uh, uh, the Michael Cole's challenges are, so why even bother having him? But anyway, um, it, it pretty much got him set up for the main event of the night. Um, him and um, The Big Show versus Mark Henry and Alberto Dario, which was later on for the night. Um... The matches really weren't all that bad. They were all Survivor Series based, trying to get everybody pumped up for Survivor Series. So all the uh, opponents were actually going to be in matches tonight. So even though it was an unlikely pairing, in my opinion, for the tag team match with um, Wahuniko and um, and Cody Rhodes versus Sin Cara and Kofi Kingston, you know, I saw that as a, as a weird pairing, but it's Survivor Series based. So, of course, you're going to see people who are in Survivor Series and matches tonight. So, they end up having not one, but two tag team matches. And it wasn't all that bad. It was actually pretty entertaining. And, you know, I, I, I have no complaints with those. Um, the tag team match of the night that was supposed to be the main event, really? I actually thought it was going to be pretty short. But honestly, it really did get me hyped up to see the Big Show and Mark Henry go at it again. And honestly, that was a match that I was looking forward to at, at Vengeance to, to begin with. But seeing how they really got you pumped up with their tag team match really gets me interested, speaking for myself, to see their match at Survivor Series. And I think that match is going to be great. Um, as for CM Punk and Alberto Del Rio, honestly... It's not going to be a bad match, but it's not going to be as epic as John Cena versus CM Punk. But honestly, I'm still looking forward to see that match after seeing them go at it. Especially, you know, seeing the outcome of CM Punk and his arm and everything. Wondering if it's going to affect his arm. That's going to be something that he's going to have to sell. But honestly, I really, I, I don't, I'm going to leave that for my predictions um, show when that um uh, probably have that on Saturday before Survivor Series actually comes around. But all in all, it wasn't a bad match. I happen to like it. I honestly thought that they were going to literally leave out um, the Diva segment, but they really didn't. They decided to have one anyway. Um, I honestly don't really understand why they decided to have Kelly Kelly and Natalya since they're not going to be on the pay-per-view at all, why do they have them compete against each other is something that I don't really understand. Plus, I'm tired of Natalia getting squashed by Kelly Kelly. If you're supposed to be the Diva of Destruction, you're supposed to be a strong heel. And you're not strong at all. You're practically pathetic. You're getting beat up every single night by itty-bitty little Kelly Kelly. She's not in crazy mode anymore, and she got beat up. By Kelly Kelly, when she's not in crazy mode, that's pretty sad. But, anyhow, there was a lot of backstage segments, segments this time, especially with um, Zack Ryder trying to get people to sign his petition so he can get, you know, his U.S. Um, title shot. He's going to get his U.S. title shot. I really don't understand what's with the petition and all, but... I mean, it's a given that he's going to get his title shot because of his popularity. He has a lot of signatures, but regardless of the signatures, he's still going to get his title shot. So I really don't know why they're promoting all that. But I end up seeing the Bella Twins in the back. Poor Bella Twins. They can't decide whether or not they're going to be wrestlers or divas or ballets. They can't make up their mind what to do with them. And they're just going to throw them anywhere they can possibly throw, especially when it comes to somebody who's popular, who's handsome, or who's supposed to be rich, like Alberto Del Rio. So, I mean, it's pretty much sad for them. But honestly, I don't really understand why Mick Foley came back. I Don't get me wrong, I love me some Mick Foley. I thought that Mick Foley wasn't going to step foot into a WWE ring again, but he ended up doing it, and I, you know, 
And I actually do find it strange that Vince McMahon actually invited him back since he said he wouldn't invite anybody back who was on TNA. And he ended up inviting McFoley back and he ran TNA at one time for the storyline. But, you know, I mean, I don't know if that's probably backstage politics or just the fact that, you know, he kind of missed Mick and brought him back. I don't know. But either or, there was really no reason to have McFoley back tonight, especially for that this is your life. And it's supposed to be the show about The Rock. And it was only about John Cena, which I don't really understand completely. And it was a really dumb segment. Um, it was funny. Some parts were funny, just like JR's dancing was hilarious. But it really didn't have a reason to even happen because the show was supposed to be about The Rock. And we only saw The Rock not once, but twice throughout the entire three-hour show. I mean, he came out. Gave me fully the rock bottom and left, <laughs> which was quite hilarious, which was really indeed funny. But honestly, I wanted to see the rock more than once. It was only twice. And in the end, when, you know, the rock does his little spiel, his little promo and everything like that, which was really, <laughs> was pretty funny. And the fact that he kind of did beat the crap out of awesome truth. I mean, honestly... The Rock really shouldn't be there because it was already proven before that John Cena actually took out the awesome truth by himself cleanly. So what was the point of even having The Rock even being there? I guess it was just a hype up for WrestleMania and that's pretty much why The Rock is there. Because in my opinion, I am not sure whether or not they're going to have the streak match. And the streak match is pretty much what ran WrestleMania for the last 19 years. So who knows what's going to happen. So they got to pump up this machine. They have to use The Rock and John Cena as a backup plan as much as they can. Because there's no guarantee that, that The Undertaker is going to be there this year. But all in all... For the matches themselves, they weren't bad, especially with, you know, Jack Swagger and his match that he had um, with um, Mason Ryan, I believe. But honestly, no, that was Dolph Ziggler. Dolph Ziggler and Mason Ryan, that match was pretty cool, but I really don't understand why Jomo got involved in it at all because this is supposed to be the, the Raw before Survivor Series, which means that everybody who is in Survivor Series is supposed to be having matches. Why Jomo is there, I don't know. Um, maybe he's going to interfere somehow in Survivor Series. I don't know. I guess he's trying to get in where he fits in because I have no idea what the outcome of his contract is. So they're trying, I guess, to get him out there before he's completely done. But um, Jack Swagger's match was really, really short with Sheamus. And it was really short. I thought it would be a little bit longer. Seeing how they both have... They don't have similar styles. One is like a street brawler. The other one's technical. Like a technical kind of wrestler. To a technical style wrestler. Um, Greco-Roman mostly. But honestly... I don't really understand why that match was like as short as it was. I mean, I really do think that match had potential to go further. But in the big, like, less than a second... But all in all, I got to say that I got to give it a C- minus for the night. And the reason why is because Raw did not get rocked. We only saw The Rock twice. And it was a show about The Rock. It should not have been three hours. I'm sorry. They, I think they did a good job promoting Survivor Series and getting people pumped up for Survivor Series. But <sighs> uh, 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 Santino Morella getting beat up by Kevin Nash... And Kevin Nash really wasn't on the pay-per-view, so the fact that he's even there and he decided to make a statement and to talk about Triple H and try to have this feud going when he actually ended the feud, when he pretty much broke um, uh, 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 Triple H's neck, and seeing how Triple H wasn't there, really, he really didn't have a purpose being there. And the fact you're beating up Santino Morello really was weak. So for that, for The Rock not being there... And also for the Raw gets rocked. It was three hours when the Raw wasn't there, and John and um, and Kevin Nash's part when he really shouldn't have a part at all is the main reason why I'm giving it a C minus for the night. This is the Nature Girl Thirty signing off. Peace out, y'all. See you later.